All right, getting on to our last player that we have for today's show for the tight ends. Maybe the most complete player, maybe the most ready to play right away. Walker Lyons, the number five tight end per 247 sports from Folsom High School in Folsom, California. Six foot four, 230 pounds. That build is a lot more filled out than any of these other guys, which is why I've referenced the fact that he might be the most ready to play and ready to contribute either as a true freshman or a redshirt freshman because he's filled in a little bit more. Currently committed to Stanford, which is a little rare amongst the rest of these groups. Uh, we don't see a lot of big name recruits going to Stanford anymore. It is tight days. end university, though. What are you talking about, man? It's, it's, it's unwell well tight end. It's yeah. unwell tight end. Well, so, <laughs> some might argue, especially the man wearing the uh, the the clover on his shirt, that Notre Dame is tight end. You, but <laughs> nah, I don't know. I don't are, know. We have, are we having that right now? <laughs> a We're close that second. Right now, yeah. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so Lions, as I said, number five tight end in this class, most complete. You see a lot of those similar things that we just talked about with Sperlin, effective route runner, great technique. But guys, I got to say out of any of these players, which is very, you know, it's it's not often that we see this with, with tight end recruits because a lot of times if you're a good athlete, your offense is just going to turn you into a really big receiver. Instead, what we get with Lions is a very willing, aggressive blocker, which I love. I always get excited by kids that are uh, willing blockers and that are going to show the, the that eagerness to put their nose in there get those dirty plays down when you're playing for a program like Stanford they're going to ask you to block they're going to ask you to to make a lot of uh, you know important blocks out there on the outside so what do we all think here and Ryan I want to head to you first about Lions as a player that he seems to be the most complete of the group yeah, I mean, I would say that he's the most advanced of the group right now, right? Like, I think that you've seen him closer to his physical maturity. I think that when you're talking about the technical aspects of the position, I think his hand placement is pretty good as a blocker. I think he runs pretty good routes for his size. It's just, Joe, like the conversation goes from, we haven't seen nearly the best of Deuce Robinson, which is pretty scary, right? We haven't seen the best of Sperlin, which is pretty scary. We haven't seen the best of Davis, which is pretty scary. I think we've seen closer to the ceiling of a Walker Lions and, that's no disrespect to him. It's just, you know, he has a little less length than those guys. He's a little maybe less growth potential, but he's a really good football player. I mean, flat out, man. He's a really dynamic all-around player for Folsom. He's able to stretch the seam a little bit. He's a good route runner. He blocks his butt off. Like, there's a lot of really good things on film for Walker Lions and credit to the Folsom program because no matter what position you're talking about, they're a really good program and they're really well coached. And you can see those aspects of Walker Lions, even off of junior film with him being lost for a senior season, that he is a technically advanced player for his age. So I really like a lot of what I saw from Walker Lions. I think he is, I know we're going to talk about this as much, but he's the guy that I think projects favorably to coming in day one and helping, helping his team pretty thoroughly all around as a player. Like I think that there's mismatch potential that day one, Deuce Robinson is going to come in and be able to bring to you. Sperlin's going to be able to bring to you. But Walker Lyons, do, with the duties in the run game and in the pass game, I feel like early on he's going to be a guy that you just kind of go, hey, two tight end sets, whatever it is, you can go and you can play. Matt, do you agree on those same sentiments about, uh, about Lyons? Yeah, I mean, really with Walker Lyons, the discussion is this. He's... He's actually just a traditional tight end. And I think we're comparing him to three other people that are on the list that are going to be labeled as tight ends, but they're really just a, you know, really big receiver, you know, as far as how they'll be used probably at the next level. And I think this guy is like, you're just your well-rounded old school football player. And I think that's why maybe there isn't quite that same, you know, um, excitement about his game as the other guys, because he's being asked to do a little bit more gritty old school football things, you know, for his program, but good hands can move athletic runs, good routes blocks. Well, I mean, these are all things that, you know, at the tight end position, especially at Stanford and the way that they use their tight ends, he's going to need all of those. And I think too, for him, he's going to be an extremely valuable asset early on in his career at Stanford in the special teams game. I think I do see him as a guy that's in punt, punt return, kickoff, kickoff return, you know, because he does have that size. He does have enough speed and athleticism, his blocking and just overall football awareness and education. I think what gives him the upper hand in this situation, as far as just an overall football player. 
I really like the note that you made about the special team stuff. And me as a, a former long snapper, I always get geeked <laughs> out over it. So anytime I can talk about a guy who's ready to contribute on special teams, like he's somebody you can put up as an up back in a, in a spread punt or can be the, uh, the personal protector in a pro style punt scheme at the same time. He's a, he's somebody that you have, you know, setting the wedges on, on kick return. You can send him to run down on kickoff, like because he's more physically developed and you see that, like what we've talked about here, he's further along. If I don't think that he's ready or we've got too many other tight ends in the room, which Stanford, as we were joking about earlier, tight end, you, they've got a lot of tight ends that are contributing in a part of that offense. Maybe he's the fourth guy down. Get him out there on special teams, have him bang a little bit, have him hit some guys, and just get ready and used to playing in Pac-12 football. By the time he's a, a, a true sophomore, that's when you start working into the offense. But I think that that's like the perfect thing to say for a guy like this, that he shows that aggressiveness, that willingness, that toughness to be the, you know, the tough guy on special teams across the board on any unit that you want to put him out there for. Surprise, surprise. Joe's geeking out on special <laughs> <laughs> But it's just it's an important aspect of the game that I feel like everyone just kind of overlooks, especially during these times of recruiting. And, and we see it every year, you know, just how important special teams are for so many of these teams, whether it is getting into the college football playoff or not. And really the biggest thing, too, like which, you know, I kind of want to stress to all of the kids out there that 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 maybe watch, you know, us nerds on this show, you know, going forward is that just. Special teams is a great way for you to just to develop your overall football IQ, your your how valuable you are to your team. And, you know, he's one of those guys where he could have a, you know, average career, you know, at Stanford and then play in the NFL for nine years. And no one would even know because he's, you know, a special teams guru. You know, and that's something that going forward, just for all these guys and, and just really for all the athletes out there that watch these shows, you know, the more that you can do, the more valuable you are to your team and just the 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 greater really the success of you or, or the greater the chances of having success going forward. And I think Walker Lyons does a really good job of, of being that well-rounded athlete. It, on on so on the college level, special teams is a pathway to early playing time, right? On the NFL level, right. to your point, it's a sticking point, right? Like, how do you make a roster? Totally. That that is like the big thing. So I I love that you kind of put that out there, Matt. It's just that I think people do undervalue the importance of playing special teams because it can be a way to contribute early on, especially for one of these football players, which is which is really nice to see. And I think that for me, Joe, like a, a cool conversation is. We, t we, we joked about the tight end you stuff, at, mm -hmm. you know, at Stanford, right? But he fits the mold of traditionally what they have liked at the tight end. Like if you think back to the Zach Ertz's of the world, the Caden Smith's of the world. I mean, Levine Toilola was a much bigger football player, but he handled his business. Fantastic blocker. Game. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. one, like upper the, level next blocker. You, yeah. You want, you want to talk about sticking point at the next level, a tight end that can block, right, Matt? Because, I mean, yeah. we've, seen, we've seen guys like him, Lee Smith's of the world, that were not dominant pass receivers, but they just stuck for a long time because they did those little things and they did the dirty work in the run game. So, and, and again, so, you're right. Like just guys that like maybe didn't shine as like overall speed or game breakers, but man, like extremely useful football players that could be used in a multitude of ways. And that was their greatest advantage too, was like, they don't have to come off the field for any particular situation. And, yeah. and that's where, you know, it's exciting for, for Walker Lyons and his potential. And, and I think he can be the next one, Joe, because we talk about, you know, the Kobe Fleeners, the yeah. Zach Ertzes, the Levine Toilolos, the Caden Smiths. They have a really good one right now in Benjamin Yorisak at Stanford. So that no, Stanford has taken a, a slight step back in recent years. They haven't been nearly as successful on the field. But one position that they've continued to do a really nice job to continue to develop is the tight end position. So I really do like that they have a next their next in line in Walker Lions potentially. Matt, you even said this. It just feels so weird talking about like a top tight end recruit going to Stanford. And, and what you said, Matt, was he could go there, have like decent production and then go to the NFL and be like a, a, a piece in an offense because he was properly coached and developed to do a lot of different things compared to maybe other guys in this recruiting class overall that are just used as receivers. And then when they get to the NFL, like kind of what we're seeing right now with Kyle Pitts, where Arthur Smith is trying to get him to block and he's not really built to block, nor does he have the background of blocking. So it's going to take him a while to actually be comfortable with that. But it's 
it's just odd talking about a Stanford guy, a Stanford tight end being a top recruit because it's just not a lot of other position groups. It just so happens that the tight end group and sometimes these quarterbacks decide to go to Stanford while everyone else picks to go play at other programs. Well, I think it's cool for, you know, for us to discuss for, with Walker Lyons, the situation is that, you know, clearly he understands exactly what he wants. He wants to get a good education. He wants to be a part of a program that really develops high character football people, you know, high football IQ to go along with the high IQ of just the aspect of their, their school and how prestigious that is. And I think he is also one of those guys too that probably sees the lineage like Ryan was discussing of the other tight ends that went there before him and the success that they had. And he's going to say, all right, I'm going to add my name to that list. And I think that's something too, that a lot of young high school athletes. And even when I think back to my own like decisions of going to college, you know, I got too caught up in trying to do like, you know, man, like this is the big time thing to do rather than just going to a school that was like, totally there to just help me become a better football player, a better person, you know, a situation where like the school fit me, the personality, the coaches and the people around you, you know, because uh, like, you know, when you fall into that trap of like, oh man, I just want to wear, you know, orange because damn, I look good in it. You know, that's where you get in trouble. You know, it's got to be about the people. It's got to be about the men that you're surrounding yourself with, you know, the, the, the school, um, you know, and just how that applies to you personally. And, uh, you know, credit to Walker Lyons for going to a place that, you know, he seems to fit his personality and what he's looking for as a player and as a person to develop.